close the moment with Hadiza Usman, MD, NPA, and uh, we're looking at the port sector reforms. Quite a number of things that Nigerians would love to see happen there, so that the vibrancy and uh, you know urgency with which some of these things must be done uh, is looked into. Very quickly, what we're talking about uh, for those trying to export things outside. You uh, talked about uh, agriculture, the need for us to. Uh, get some of these produce and products out. While we're on break, we're also looking at the share butter uh, mm -hmm. business, which many Nigerians were into, and how we seem to have lost that business to another country. Mm -hmm. How well is your port, or is your office, looking mm -hmm. uh, to making sure that uh, the exporters who would want to go into mm -hmm. some kind of uh, export business mm -hmm. don't have all of those headaches? This is what we've done by developing a standard operations procedure on prioritization of export on agri-produce. Um, we've worked with the terminal operators, but it's important for us to realize that beyond the Nigerian Post Authority, other agencies of government need to facilitate and ensure that there's efficiency. We have several tiers of forms that need to be filled outside of the ambit of Nigerian Post Authority. That is indeed what makes it challenging. On our part, we've concluded on the standard operations procedure, which I'll be presenting to the Minister of Agri and also for solid minerals. But those bureaucratic bottlenecks that are obtainable across other agencies of government needs to be addressed. And as I mentioned, this critical initiative being driven by the Vice President needs to be articulated and ensuring that every government agency adheres to the turnaround time of filling the form. In certain instances, we need to collapse all those processes to make them a single location where a single form where you fill out one you make one payment and you're able to take your products out just as you mentioned on the share butter uh, i was informed that um, ghana is said to be the highest importer of share butter meanwhile it's from nigeria they take it out to nigeria to ghana and they export from ghana but it is actually from nigeria okay Yeah, looking at, uh, there was a time that, you know, some government agencies were driven out of the port. Uh, one, there were concerns as to, you know, whether or not that was wise or safe. Mm. NAFDAP was one of them. Mm. Uh, Standards Organization of Nigeria was another one. Is mm. that still the situation? Yes, it is. We have six agencies of government that operate in the ports, and we believe they suffice. And these agencies themselves need to collaborate and work together. Whatever forms these agencies have to fill, we need to see these forms being collapsed and made easier for people to fill out. We need to develop the IT infrastructure to enable people assess all this data and make all this payment and fill out these forms in an efficient and transparent manner. So you don't need to queue up for a long time. You don't need to fill out forms. You don't need to keep making inquiries of the procedure. One of the things we want to do in the Nigerian Ports Authority is to demystify our processes so that everybody understands our processes, everybody understands our respective tariff regimes. In doing that, we have now put up our tariff on our website, which hadn't been done historically. We have all our tri tariffs, all our pricing being hosted on our website. We're also now putting advertorials in the newspaper so that the world and Nigerians will see all the tariffs are obtainable in the Nigerian Post Authority. This is one of our initiatives on instituting transparency in our operations. Now, now, now let's uh, look at some other issue because when you sit in your office, what mm. comes to mind uh, for a lot of people around that office is the Lagos port and perhaps the port in uh, River State. Yeah. Have you visited that of Wari and maybe Calabar? Yes, we've visited um, all the port locations. Does, it, does it really worry you when you look at, for instance, Wari Port, where we talk about the dredging that that port need and uh, the amount of business that can also give to us if mm -hmm. we uh, move in to do what we should do? Yes, we, we were at Wari. There are challenges with um, the depth of the draft. We're having an initial um, sweeping of, of the channels. There is a problem with the breakwater in Escravos. We're also putting in place remedial works. But as we go towards determining dredging, we need to have the numbers to understand the priority of dredging. As we invest a certain amount, we need to have projections of the revenue that will come from a port to enable us to know that deployment of this amount of resources will translate into an equal amount of revenues coming into our ports. Um, the, um, is, is that being done? Because off the top of my head, yes. if you look at it, a lot of the importers are mm. spread across mm. different parts of the country. Yes. For those in the south-south of mm. the country, definitely if they have a very vibrant mm port mm. dead. I don't think anyone would want to take their mm. goods through Lagos ports. Mm. Definitely you just go, if I know my business concern is around Worry or mm. Delta State mm. or in Benin City, Edo mm. State mm. or that axis, mm. surely the, the port for me to look to will be the Worry port. Yes, um, in determining coming into a, a, a port, 
they look at the channels, they determine how much it's going to cost them in terms of distance, they have their calculation that they do. We in the Nigerian Post Authority would work on dredging these respective ports. The Calabar port is an interesting port which we think is important to to ensure that the, de the depth is, is deep enough for vessels to come in. It's the closest port to the northeast part of the country. It is a location that we can have extensive import and um, in export of agri-produce. It's also a location where you can evacuate cargo direct to the northeast part of the country. One of the things that we saw was the, ex the highway leading out of Calabar into the northeast. That's a critical evacuation point. We've written to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing requesting that this road is prioritized in the 2017 budget. Budget. That way, as we dredge Calabar ports, we also have access and evacuation of the cargo to the hinterland through the um, northeast part of the country. How does that fall within the purview of the works and housing? Is it the works? It's a federal state? road. Oh, you're talking about the road. The road. I'm looking at the ports now. No, if we, as if we, we evacuate from yes, the ports. Yes, as we conclude on our dredging, dredging. of Calabar ports, to also make it more um, vibrant, we need to have access to the hinterland and one of the critical um, locations and access is to the northeast part of the country is the nearest port to the northern part of the country so I'm to sorry. enable you do that we need to now have the road that would evacuate the cargo and that road is important i'm sure you'd also be looking at towards the rails as well yes to build the rails but the what about the deep sea ports yes. since we're looking at ports now what mm. about the deep sea ports are you looking towards that because i do know that uh, Calabar is planning a deep sea port. I think Aquabum is also planning a deep sea port and Worry as well. Are those in the works as well? Part oh, well, um, on Azim in office, I met several requests for port development, deep sea ports. And I felt that there's a need to have a plan which guides port development, their environment challenges, their competitiveness, their, all these challenges that needs to be looked at as you determine a location for a port. We need not to cluster the ports. We need to determine what port should be located where. And interestingly, um, I met in place a, a master plan that was being developed for our ports. And that um, um, document is ongoing. The consultant has submitted a draft report. Um, I'm keen to have that done in a very um, proper manner. So that would guide the approvals and locations of ports. The ministry has also um, agreed to suspend the approvals of port um, development pending the outcome of the master plan. This master plan would guide the location of ports. You know, I, 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 I deliberately asked, the, sorry to cut you, I deliberately asked a question about Wari and Calabar and mm. don't forget that we also started off by mm. talking about the concessioning yeah. and it has to do because of uh, the allegations, mm. perhaps I don't know if you've heard that, that mm. uh, the developments of these two ports in our Wari and Calabar ports are, are being deliberately blocked mm. by those who mm. have the concession, who, uh, 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 who are managing the Onair port, mm. uh, the other ones blocking this so that mm. uh, you don't get uh, to fix this too. Knowing mm. for all that, for instance, Worry definitely can also serve on each other and we know the kind of mm. big business. Mm. Uh, the other time we, we had, uh, uh, you know, and. Uh, our look at Anambra, we saw the amount of you know business opportunities and businesses in Anambra State. Mm. That is the only job. So definitely, if you fix mm. the war report, mm. it's as good as opening up business mm. for those who are mm. in the southeast of the country. Mm. So why isn't this a priority is mm. what we want to know this morning. No, it is a priority. As I mentioned, we are we're initiating um, sweeping of the channels in, in Worry. There's a situation where the um, breakwater is collapsed. We're also um, putting in place remedial works as we institute a proper, proper... Nobody would influence our choices and our decisions. No entity would determine which um, ports are dredged or not. We do not accept competition. We believe that 11 playing fields should be available for all operations within the country. We're looking to see the challenges within Calibre ports, which you're aware of on the dredging and the, the dredging company on if it actually dredged and all of those. We're concluding on that and seeing that... Um, the drafts, uh, the dredging is done. We're also keen to open up the trade route within the Gulf of Guinea to have trade coming in through um, Calabar ports and on Eastern ports. There are no, no one would influence um, our decisions as it relates to improvement of infrastructure and utilization of our respective ports. Okay. Yes, talking about uh, infrastructure outside of the ports, which are not directly under your purview, uh, mm. but which a lot of people complain about, uh, how far have you been able to go in trying to help so solve some of the problem, especially because it also affects whether or not uh, you know, people will still patronize your port at the end of the day mm. uh, after the reforms have been uh, put in place? Mm. 
We have um, we've identified the upper gridlock as a big problem. We know that um, the, as you mentioned, it's not within our purview, but I've instituted a, a, a team across the agencies of government, Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, Lagos State Government, we sit together to articulate what needs to be done. One of the initial things that we are concluding on is the refurbishment works that needs to be done on the Wharf Road. We have terminal operators, Ngote Group, flour mills that have come together and are working on submitting final drawings to build concrete roads in that, in that corridor. The Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is leading on that. And also, respective roads within the location have been committed for 2017 budget. The Minister has confirmed that they're in the 2017 budget. And right now we have palliative works that are ongoing to ensure that the roads are navigable. One of the important things that we need to um, understand is that the, the, the trailers are permanently on the road because there are no holding bays and trailer garages that are being run efficiently. Um, we have noted that as a concern. The trailers are just on the road, whiling away the time. Mm. Now we are working with NAFIT, which is a World Bank initiative, to have electronic management of um, trailer parks, whereby a trailer can only be on the road if it has, it's on its way to collecting a cargo. You know, so many things we we'll, would we'll like to do. Uh, when do you think we can call you again to mm -hmm. ask you? Because so many of all of those things you have highlighted are yes. plans and yes. works. Yes. So when do you think we'll get to see some of them come to fruition? Oh, we're looking at first quarter 2017. Okay, we'll do that. And uh, before we wrap up, uh, you were... Are you still an activist? Because you were in the front line of the Bring Back Our Girls, and since after your appointment, I don't know if that has ended. Not at all. Um, my role in the campaign of um, the rescue of the Chiba Girls is still ongoing. I have my badge, which I wear on a daily basis. I'm now living in Lagos. I try to attend the Falomore weekly meeting that we, we hold on Bring Back Our Girls. You know, the advocacy is something that you should not die down. You know, it's something that we should sustain. The campaign for the Chiba Girls is for the rescue of every other person that has been held captive by Boko Haram. It's also to support our Nigerian military to ensure that the insurgency is brought to an end. So I'll continue to raise my voice for the Chiba girls and for every other person that has been held captive by Boko Haram. Hadiz Elsman, MDNPA, many thanks for, having, uh, for joining us on Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. We'll take a moment now, we'll return shortly. Join us again. <laughs>